Hello and welcome back. So at this point, what we've done with the database class is enough. So we're going to close it uh, never to edit it again. So close the database class. We are good to go. The next time you want to change your database and all those details, you go to the config page and that's where you change those settings for your database and it's going to run. And you can also change the website title and so on. And then if you don't want errors to be showing, here you put false. So let's close that one as well. Let's close the init as well. We don't need that for now. So what we do need though is the controller here and that is the sign up controller. So what's happening in the sign up controller is when we go to sign up, at this point we are showing the data. So instead of showing this data, we want to instantiate the user model which is right here so let me open that as well uh, let me go back to sign up okay good so once we load that we're supposed to give it this value here the post variable so that it can sign the user up so let's go to the user class here and look at the classes we have in here or oh, the function sorry so in here we have sign up. So this is the one we need to call. So I shouldn't be using capital letters here. I don't know why I did that. So let's use the small letters instead. So sign up and we put post there. So that's what we will do. <clears throat> so it's going to be user. So be careful with the capitalization. So if I put a capital letter here to every time I want to call it, I have to use that. So for maybe for ease of use, let's use small letters throughout. So say user is equal to, oh, sorry, we've already instantiated it. So we'll say user sign up. And then let's pass in the post variable. And let's remove that. So here, that's all we need to do. Assign that and uh, that's it. Now, we need to go in and create this function. So let's go back here and create this function. Good. So here we go. So what we want to do with the data that is being received. So let's come back here and see that data in action. So I will add my values again. Password. And then password. Okay, great. So want to get this, get that, and make sure everything is running properly before we sign it up. Okay, so back here. Oh, wait a minute. For testing purposes, I think, let me put back that show here so that we can be seeing what's happening. I think that's important. Okay, so let me sign up. Okay, so that's the information there. So the passwords are good. Everything is good. So let's evaluate this text right there to make sure that uh, everything complies with what we want. So I'm going to give you some regular ex expressions here, which I've already made. You can just copy so that uh, it can evaluate these uh, values here. Actually, on second thought, I think it's important that you see how these regular expressions are created. So for you that don't know what a regular expression is, it's um, it's something we use, a pattern that is used to search for a, spe a specific kind of text. So let me just copy this so you can see this in action. And I go to Sublime Text, create a new page, new file here, and paste these things here. So this is how you're going to be testing your regular expression. So if you go down here to Sublime Text or whatever text editor you're using, I'll press Control F to bring up the find. So normally, if you want to find a word like name here, you type the name there and you press find and then it will find the name. Now, imagine I want to tell it to find every name in here, every word in here, except for these symbols, these brackets and so on. I just want it to find words, all these words in here. So you see that it will be very difficult for me to actually type something in here in the search that will select every 
single word in here except the symbols okay that would be difficult but regular expressions do that very easily so to show you go to the bottom corner here uh, bottom left and there's a button here that says regular expression so you click that or you can press alternate r is it it's out plus r or capital r is it i'm not sure but anyway just click there now what happens is uh we are in regular expression mode so we can design our regular expression down here so now in order for me to find what i'm looking for instead of just typing the words here i can tell it for example i want to find every single word in here okay i will put these brackets like so and tell it that i want to find a to z see that so it it has shown me a to z everything in here and then also i want to put capital a dash z like so so now as you can see it has selected all the letters in here except these symbols here and the at is not selected the dot isn't and that isn't selected either so this is working well but the problem is it has selected them one by one by one i wanted to select the whole thing as one word so how do we go about doing that there are two ways if at the end here of these brackets i put a plus sign like that it means any amount of this so instead of lo just looking for one of these uh, it will find any amount there so another use of this kind of thing is this so let's say let's imagine for example you have to you're you are trying to search for a name there's a horse maybe and then there's another word called hearse like this so as you can see these guys are similar here horse and hearse here the only difference is the O and the E there. So you can still use a regular expression to select both of these at the same time by, I can just get the end of this and put it at the end here and put an H at the beginning there like that. So as you can see, both of them have been selected even though they are different because I've told it that in here, as long as there's one of these letters that could is part of the alphabet that's good enough so or i can tell it i want o oh sorry let me go down here i can just put o or e like that like this so it's going to look for either of these so a word that looks like horse but can have o or e there it will still work so it has selected both of these so as you can see regular expressions are very very powerful they are a good way to uh, check if things are actually uh, what you wanted so in our case let me go back to the a to z okay so what we want in our name is a to z we don't want any spaces so no spaces there just a to z a to z and a to z and then we're going to put a plus at the end to say any number of of letters or you can use a star if you want it to select zero or more but we don't want zero we want at least one letter in there like that so we're going to say plus so that will select this and then at the beginning here we can put a caret sign here shift uh, where is this caret sign on number six on the keyboard like there so at the beginning and then at the so for example here if there's a number here there are some numbers like that you see the numbers are not selected so that's good uh, and then i can tell it that i want so if i put a carrot at the beginning there i'm telling it to start from the beginning so from the very beginning there should be a letter like this and any number of words like that okay so what this means is from the beginning to the end so let me put a dollar sign here so beginning to end the word should have letters only so you see these guys have not been selected because some of these have spaces here like so which do not count and unless if i had added a space in there i think i don't know so let me remove the numbers here let's see that 
and let's remove the capital let's see that Oop. oh so in here it's starting from that very beginning okay so the reason it broke down here is because this is the beginning for it and then as soon as it got here it stopped okay now because our input boxes are just one line they're single line they're not like this so we can use this just fine I can show you that if I remove everything but the name there. So as you can see, the name has been selected, uh, which is pretty good. So this is our regular expression right there. So I'm going to copy this and I will use notepad here so that we can save it. This is for name. That's our regular expression right there. So let's create a second regular expression for our email address. So as you can see, uh, let me move everything over so that email is at the beginning. Okay, so email is not being selected here. Uh, this should have been selected though. So let's see what's happening. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's because I had said uh, even at the end there should be that. So let's do this. Beginning uh, A to Z, any number. And so we've selected this. So what I want to do here is construct a regular expression that will select the entire email address and only the email. So not this, not that, none of this should be selected. Okay, so, so far so good, we've selected that, but let's put the at symbol there. So let's put at, so we've added that. And then we want to know what the name here is, whether it's going to be Yahoo or whatever it is. So we're just going to copy exactly this and put it there like that. Okay. So it's possible some people do use underscore and so on and so forth in their email address. So we will put underscore there just in case. Uh, do they do that? Or oh, and they minus sign there so whatever symbols you want you add in there that you think are good for email addresses you put them in there but i had written a different uh regular expression earlier so if i find that one we're going to use that one but here this is for learning purposes so let's keep going so there we go so here it's very rare to find numbers so if at all so we're going to leave it like that and then we'll put a dot and then there's dot com there at the end, but sometimes there's dot space, dot, dot online, dot whatever that is. So we're just going to paste one more like that. So as you can see, the email has been selected. So which means if I type another email down here, let's say um, fibercom.com like that, that's not a good email. So, I'll say person still not selected at so as soon as I did that it has recognized that this is a valid email okay so which means this is working fine so let me copy that copy and also I have to put the dollar sign at the end to make sure that from beginning to end it's just an email address because otherwise it would have selected other things at the end there so we don't want that as well. So let me copy this and put it in our stash. So I'll say email, that's the one, okay. So what's remaining is password. So we don't need to do a regular expression on the password uh, that anything can go as long as uh, things are fine. So that's good enough. So let me close this. Let me remove that regular expression. And now let's come back to user class right there and do our evaluation. So here, what I want to do is to grab first the username. So username is equal to post username. And then this, uh, there are two passwords here. So email and then we have password here. And then we have password two. Okay, great. 
Now, uh, since we are using uh, prepared statements, there's no need to sanitize these. So we'll keep going here and use our regular expressions instead. So since the video has gone on long enough, I will cut here and then we'll come back in the next video where we're going to see how to do the proper evaluation here.